Hello, I'm Darren Slack, and welcome to Week 11 of NFA's QB Cast, your weekly prep talk podcast for helping everyone associated with game day to get better. We're continuing our quarterback leadership series this week with number 11 on the list of critical attributes for quarterback leaders on the field and in life, and that's perseverance. Perseverance is steadfastness in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. This week represents the end of some team seasons, and for others, the beginning of the playoffs. For those that see the end in sight and the postseason coming, this is the time to take the first steps towards your offseason journey. In other words, next week or the week after represents next season. Your mindset has to reset and accept that next season is already here. It's in these days while fatigue from the season is at its highest and the next football season is farthest away where our perseverance is tested. The willingness to remain steadfast in our preparation despite having the dreams of this past season delayed it requires perseverance. It's not the same as endurance. Endurance is the idea of putting up with something difficult. It speaks of it as something rather to be avoided. Perseverance is a full awareness and acceptance of the inevitable adversity in the pursuit of a dream. It's not defensive in nature. It's an offensive concept of intentionally moving the chains towards a stated goal with the same energy you've always had despite knowing that difficulty is coming. Perseverance is the leader's main weapon against discouragement, disillusionment, disrespect, and disappointment. The mental and emotional drain of an unfulfilled goal or expectations in any effort is real. Add to that the collective feelings of all those that the leader serves, and it becomes even more challenging if you don't achieve the goal. Perseverance is the antidote to the leader tempted to withdraw or shrink back. It's a willful determination to press on from an inner strength of belief in the mission and an acceptance of the adversity that comes in the process. The quarterback leader must be able to reconcile within himself the failure to achieve and the future hope he pursues while convincing others through his example that it's worth it to keep going. It's that season when the leader's full measure of attributes is recruited to drive that character engine forward, often with nothing outwardly positive to assist the effort. The leader must press on in spite of everything appearing to be over or done. That's the question Perseverance is answering today. Is it worth it to keep going? So I'd like to offer three thoughts this week on persevering as a leader in our pursuit of the dream, especially in the offseason, and leave with you a valuable piece of advice from a noted author. Number one, the question about it being worth it to go on is never about the it, but rather the who. The leader is always confronted with counting the cost of moving forward after failure or a setback, because there's a huge emotional energy investment required to keep serving and working when there isn't any obvious payoff visible anywhere. You may find the weight room empty, but you know it's empty because you're still there working and others aren't. You may find players still complaining. You must remain positive. You may find your own heart wanting to yield to failure. But the fight within you is evidence that what you're doing for the team still matters. Don't be upset about the struggle. Embrace it as evidence that you care deeply, not just for the championship, but for the players that you're serving. It's infinitely more important to the quarterback leader who he is fighting for rather than what he's fighting for. We want the championship for the team that we care about. There is some motivation to succeed on just the principle and the value of achieving a championship, sure, but the motivation becomes incredibly more worth it when the leader keeps his eye on who he is persevering for, his team, his brothers, his second family. I've spoken a great deal in this series about love and leadership and perseverance is love, staying steady on course and a leader in the face of real defeat and disappointment. Always remember that the drive to maintain in a leader is most effective when the object of his love is the people he serves, not just the thing that he wants. The pain of the past will subside and it'll give way to a bright future. It's just going to take some time. This is the stuff of legacy and greatness. Yes, stats, victories, and amazing plays are all fun to remember about amazing quarterback leaders. We all tell the stories. But when the discussion of a leader's true greatness comes up, the backdrop of the conversation and the respect held for them will always be the perseverance and determination that they demonstrated while they were leading. There will be stories told about service given, sacrifices made, and strength exhibited. And that's what really matters and why your team and coaches are worth it to persevere for. Number two, leadership is most valuable in seasons of perseverance, though it's not always appreciated. The greatest value of leadership is in adversity because it's so easy for teammates to lose perspective. Leaders become a fixed point to help teammates stay the course despite not feeling it's worth it to keep going themselves. In many cases, teammates will lean on the faith and courage of good leadership when their own is diminished or even gone. 
Unfortunately, not everyone will always follow the example set by the leaders. So there will be times in which leaders must overcome the negativity and naysaying of those who've lost heart or even given up on the team around them. Or they'll have to confront the criticisms of those who don't agree with the approach or the performance of the leader because they're either jealous or think there's a better way to get something done. This can happen a lot to young quarterbacks. Leaders must be able to overcome the doubts of others who wonder if the team is going in the right direction because of the quarterback's failure or even because of the coach's failure. The great quarterback leader must separate in all the swirling opinions that come what needs to change from the simple frustration of unmet expectations. If you as a quarterback didn't play well or the team struggled because of your mistakes or there's a lost confidence in your leadership, this all must be confronted in your own heart through perseverance. The only way out of that criticism, doubt, and negativity from others isn't avoiding it. It's going through it with class and keeping your mouth shut conviction in doing the right things for the right reasons, and compassion for those who are frustrated by the failure. There's a need for quarterback leaders to persevere through the lack of appreciation, blame shifting, and disloyalty. Because it's in these moments when the team decides if the quarterback leader is going to keep his promise to be who he said he would be. This will be a challenging time to overcome, no doubt. But the biggest test of a quarterback leader's perseverance, or any leader for that matter, is actually number three. Number three is self-doubt is the leader's greatest opponent in the quest for perseverance. Vince Lombardi, the great football coach, once said, the difference between a successful person and others is not a lack of strength, not a lack of knowledge, but rather a lack of determination. And to follow that up, Steve Martin, the legendary comic, once wisely said, thankfully, perseverance is a good substitute for talent. <laughs> talent has always been a significant aspect of evaluating players and leaders for the next level of whatever someone aspires to. But what evaluators want to really see is the level of determination and perseverance they possess. They know it's inevitable that every leader will be tested by adversity and the level of perseverance they possess will sustain them, not their talent. This is why it's so important that they see it. Self-doubt, loss of confidence, inability to get over failure has sidelined many a potentially great leader. But the key to overcoming self-doubt is actually something that doesn't make a lot of sense at first. But I promise you, it works. Self-doubt is overcome through self-sacrifice, serving, taking the humble posture of seeing others receive the help they need. It restores a leader's confidence in himself, reminds them of their value, and provides much needed perspective about how others are more important. Persevering in any season of self-doubt is the hardest challenge a quarterback leader will face, or any leader for that matter. You will feel self-conscious about every throw you make, every weight you lift, every move you make. This is why getting your mind and heart focused on serving is so important to take your mind off of your success or failure and getting it on helping others achieve. Self-doubt is the illusion of lost confidence because our failure is clouding our judgment. Throwing a critical pick in the playoff game to end the season, fumbling the ball away when the team needed to score, or making a foolish mistake of any kind will test your heart and your team's confidence in you. But you can get through it by determining to serve your way back through it and persevere. In closing, I want to read a classic Rudyard Kipling piece called If, A Father's Advice to a Son. This could actually represent a coach's advice to a quarterback leader or be advice to anyone aspiring to leadership. Take a moment to pause what you're doing and listen carefully. Capture the wisdom. Think about how you want to be through adversity as a quarterback leader for your team. I cannot improve on these words he penned to explain perseverance. <laughs> this is epic. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired of waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating. And yet don't look too good nor talk too wisely. You can dream and not make dreams your master. If you can think and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those imposters just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools. Or watch the things you gave your life to broken. And stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss, if you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they're gone and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you could talk with crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings and not lose the common touch. 
If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And, which is more, you'll be a man, my son. Notice the end result. The glory of victory for persevering is being the man you said you would be. That has been the message of our leadership series for this entire season. It's where the great reward of every quarterback leader resides in being respected for the man and player he was when adversity came calling and perseverance was needed. I hope that inspires you to persevere as leaders on the field. Next week, we'll dive into one more important attribute for quarterback leaders. But this week, let's evaluate how committed we are to persevering for our team, our coaches, and our families. We wish you the best NFA Nation in your games this week, and we'll talk to you next week after your win.